Hi, I'm Emma. Before I dive into my story, please make sure to like and subscribe for more. Now, let me take you on a journey that turned my life upside down. The day I inherited Aunt Marlene's painting, I thought it was a blessing. The artwork, a mesmerizing landscape, always captivated me as a child. But little did I know, it was the beginning of a tumultuous chapter in my life. I was in my cozy apartment, the painting now hanging in my living room, when I received an unexpected visitor. Mr. Jenkins, a representative from the local museum, stood at my door, his expression stern. Miss Emma, I regret to inform you that the painting you possess is a stolen piece of art. His words hit me like a ton of bricks. Stolen? That's impossible. It was my aunt's. Unfortunately, the evidence suggests otherwise. It was reported stolen from our museum a decade ago. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Aunt Marlene involved in art theft? No way. I knew her as a kind soul, passionate about art and culture. I need some time to process this, I said, my mind racing. Jenkins nodded. We understand, but we'll need to take action. This is a serious matter. After he left, I sat there, staring at the painting. The peaceful landscape now looked back at me with a hint of mystery and deceit. The next day, I decided to confront the situation head-on. I visited the museum, hoping to clear up this misunderstanding. At the museum, I met Linda, a curator, who was sympathetic yet firm. Emma, we understand this is hard for you, but the painting is part of our lost treasures. We need to recover it. But it belonged to my aunt. She wouldn't steal, I insisted. Linda sighed. I'm sorry, Emma. The legal team is already involved. I left the museum feeling defeated, but not ready to give up. The painting was all I had left of Aunt Marlene, and I needed to find out the truth. Over the next few days, I dug into Aunt Marlene's past. Going through her old diaries and letters, I stumbled upon something that caught my eye. A letter from a renowned art dealer, Mr. Grayson. The letter was cryptic, but hinted at a secret transaction involving the painting. Curious and determined, I decided to pay Mr. Grayson a visit. His gallery was in the upscale part of town, adorned with exquisite art pieces. Confronting him wasn't easy. Mr. Grayson, I need to know about this painting. It's causing me a lot of trouble. Grayson, a smooth talker, feigned ignorance. Emma, I deal with countless artworks. I can't possibly remember each one. But I saw a flicker of recognition in his eyes when I showed him the photo of the painting. I knew he was hiding something. Frustrated, I left the gallery with more questions than answers. It was clear that I was caught in a web of lies and deception. Determined to clear my aunt's name and save the painting, I decided to take matters into my own hands. It was time to uncover the truth, no matter the cost. I started by reaching out to people who knew Aunt Marlene. Sarah, her old friend, was particularly helpful. Over coffee, she reminisced about Marlene's love for art. Marlene always spoke highly of that painting, said it was a gift from an old admirer. She treasured it. A gift? Not a purchase? I asked, intrigued. Definitely a gift. She would never have the heart to indulge in anything unethical. This revelation added a new layer to the mystery. If Aunt Marlene received the painting as a gift, then how did it end up being stolen art? I knew I had to find more evidence. My next stop was the city library, where I spent hours researching the painting's history and the museum's stolen art cases. Buried in old newspapers and art journals, I found a clue. A scandal involving the museum a few years back where several artworks were reported missing under mysterious circumstances. The more I discovered, the more the pieces started to fall into place. Aunt Marlene wasn't a thief, someone else was pulling the strings, and I was determined to expose them. The painting was more than just art. It was a key to a secret that someone desperately wanted to keep hidden, and I was about to blow it wide open. I was deep in my investigation, trying to uncover the truth about the painting, Sitting in a cramped, dusty corner of the city library, I was surrounded by old newspapers and art catalogs, piecing together the painting's elusive history. Then, a breakthrough. I stumbled upon an old article about a scandal at the museum, a heist that occurred around the same time Aunt Marlene acquired the painting. The dots were starting to connect, but I needed more. I decided to visit the museum again, but this time, to dig deeper. At the museum, I bumped into Mr. Jenkins again. Back so soon, Miss Emma. I need to access your archives. I believe the painting's history is key to solving this mystery. He hesitated, but finally agreed. This way, please. 
In the archives, I pored over documents, looking for anything related to the heist. Then, I found it. A list of stolen items, and there, listed amongst them, was a painting that matched the description of mine. But something else caught my eye. A name. Mr. Grayson. The same art dealer from Aunt Marlene's letter. He was implicated in the heist, but somehow avoided charges. And now, he was on the museum's board. The plot was thickening. I had to confront Grayson again. I went straight to his gallery. You again? I thought I made myself clear. I can't help you. I know about the heist. You were involved. And now this painting is causing me a world of trouble. Grayson's demeanor changed. His smooth confidence faltered. Listen, Emma. You're playing a dangerous game. I want the truth. What happened with the painting? Grayson sighed, a defeated look in his eyes. All right. It was part of the heist. But I didn't steal it. I was framed, and now... I can't afford to have this come out. So, Grayson was a victim too? This was more complicated than I thought, but I didn't fully trust him. Then help me clear this up. Help me and yourself. He nodded slowly. All right, I'll tell you everything I know. Grayson's story was a twisted tale of betrayal and greed. He was set up by someone inside the museum, someone who used the heist to climb the ranks. My head was spinning with this new information. I had to expose the truth, not just for me, but for Aunt Marlene and even Grayson. Leaving the gallery, I knew what I had to do. It was time to take this to the next level. I needed to gather a team, people I could trust to help me unravel this tangled web. I reached out to an old college friend, Mia, who was now a savvy lawyer. We met at a local coffee shop, and I laid out everything. Emma, this is huge. We can take them down, but it's going to be risky. I know... But I have to do this. For Aunt Marlene. Mia nodded. Count me in, but we'll need more help. Next, I contacted Leo, a skilled hacker I knew from a previous job. He was a bit of a loner, but brilliant at what he did. We met in his cluttered, tech-filled apartment. So, you want to take on the museum and this art dealer? Sounds like fun. I explained the situation, and Leo was in. I can dig up dirt on the museum... Track financial records, anything you need. Our final recruit was Rachel, an art historian and old friend of Aunt Marlene's. She still held my aunt in high regard and was more than willing to help. We all met at my apartment, our makeshift headquarters. All right, team, we're up against some powerful people, but together, we can expose the truth. Mia, Leo, Rachel, and I spent hours brainstorming, coming up with a plan to reveal the deceit and corruption. We needed solid proof something that would stand up in the court of public opinion and law. Let's set a trap, Mia suggested. A public event showcasing the painting. We'll invite the media, art critics, and of course, the museum board. I loved the idea. It was bold, risky, but it could work. We'd reveal everything at the event. The painting's true history, Grayson's story, the museum's involvement. Over the next few weeks, we worked tirelessly. Leo uncovered financial irregularities linking the museum to shady dealings. Rachel traced the painting's history, gathering. So, we're really doing this? Mia asked, her eyes scanning the room. Me, Leo, and Rachel. Taking on the big guns? Absolutely, I replied, feeling the weight of the challenge. We can't let them get away with this. We were huddled in my apartment, which had turned into our operations center. Papers, laptops, and cups of half-drunk coffee littered the table. The air was thick with determination. Rachel, flipping through her notes, chimed in. The painting's history is like a puzzle, but Emma, we've pieced together its journey. It's legit. Leo cracked his knuckles. And I've got dirt on the museum's financials. It's shady, to say the least. Mia leaned forward, her lawyer's brain ticking. We need a stage. A grand reveal. Expose them publicly. That's the plan, I said. A public exhibition. Invite the press, art world, and our friends at the museum. But how do we get them to come? Rachel wondered aloud. A little bait, I suggested. A mysterious, newly discovered work by a famous artist. Leo raised an eyebrow. And they'll bite because? Because it's a chance for them to save face. They think they can sweep this under the rug. We worked tirelessly over the next few weeks, planning every detail. The event needed to be flawless. Invitations were sent, 
Media was alerted, and the bait was set. The day of the exhibition, my heart was racing. The gallery was buzzing with guests, reporters, and art enthusiasts. And then, they arrived. Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Grayson, along with the museum's board. The gallery was packed, buzzing with anticipation and skepticism. I stood at the podium, Mia at my side, while Leo and Rachel worked the crowd, ensuring our plan was in motion. Good evening, everyone. What you're about to witness isn't just an unveiling, but a revelation. The room hushed, all eyes on me. This painting, I said, gesturing to the covered artwork, represents more than artistic expression. It symbolizes deceit and exploitation. Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Grayson exchanged nervous glances. Leo projected the documents onto the screen. Let's start with the painting's documented history. The audience leaned in as he narrated the journey of the painting, from its creation to its theft, to its mysterious reappearance in my aunt's collection. Now, for the twist, Rachel chimed in, uncovering the painting. Gasps filled the room as the replica was revealed. This isn't the original. It's a statement about how easily we can be misled. Mia stepped forward, her lawyer's poise commanding the room. We have concrete evidence linking the museum to illegal art dealings. The crowd murmured, eyes darting between the screen and the museum officials. But why? A voice called out from the back. Profit, I answered. Art turned into a commodity. Ethics be damned. Jenkins attempted damage control. This is a misunderstanding. Grayson cut him off, his composure crumbling. No use, Jenkins. We're caught. The crowd erupted in chatter, phones raised to capture the moment. This goes beyond the painting, Mia said. We're talking about legal ramifications for all involved. Post-event, the fallout was swift. The story of the fake unveiling, the museum's corrupt practices, and Grayson's fall from grace dominated headlines. A few days later, I received a visit from Detective Harris, the officer assigned to the case. Emma, your little stunt has opened a can of worms. We're investigating the museum's acquisitions and Grayson's dealings. Good. They need to be held accountable. Harris nodded. You've done your part. Let the law handle it now. One evening, as I sat in my apartment, the doorbell rang. It was Mrs. Donovan, the museum's new interim director. Emma, I... We owe you an apology. The museum failed in its duties. An apology won't fix what was broken, Mrs. Donovan. She nodded, understanding. We're making changes. And we'd like to offer you a role in overseeing our new ethical acquisition process. I was taken aback. Thank you, but I think my aunt's painting taught me enough about the art world. Mrs. Donovan left, and I looked at the replica painting, now a symbol of truth and justice. Aunt Marlene would have been proud, not just of the painting, but of the courage to stand for what's right. It was a sunny afternoon when I got the call from Mia. Emma, it's official. The painting is legally yours. I let out a breath I didn't realize I'd been holding. Finally, some justice. And Grayson? I asked, facing charges, and the museum's reputation is in tatters. I smiled, a sense of victory washing over me. But there was still one thing left to do. I arranged to meet with Mrs. Donovan at the museum. The halls that once intimidated me now seemed less imposing. Emma, it's good to see you, Mrs. Donovan greeted me. I wanted to discuss the painting's future, I said. We were hoping you'd lend it to us, as a symbol of our new beginning. I shook my head. I have another plan for it. Mrs. Donovan looked puzzled, but nodded. A few days later, I stood in a different museum, one dedicated to recovered and stolen art. The director, Mr. Kent, was a kind-hearted man who understood the significance of such pieces. This painting will be a great addition to our collection, he said. I want it to be a symbol of hope, of justice prevailing. Mr. Kent smiled. It will be. As I left the museum, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. I had turned a challenging chapter of my life into something meaningful. I decided to walk home, taking in the city I loved. The streets were bustling with life, and for the first time in a long while, I felt at peace. On the way, I bumped into Leo. Hey, Emma, heard about the painting. You did good. Thanks, Leo. Couldn't have done it without you and the team. He grinned. Anytime. You know where to find me if you need to uncover any more scandals. I laughed. Let's hope there won't be a need. Next, I met Rachel for coffee. I saw the news, she said. 
You're making waves, Emma. Just trying to do what's right. And inspiring others along the way, Rachel added. Our conversation drifted to Aunt Marlene, her legacy, and the adventure she unknowingly sent me on. As I walked back to my apartment, the sun setting behind the city skyline, I reflected on my journey. It was filled with challenges, betrayals, and revelations. But in the end, it was about truth, justice, and honoring a legacy. I didn't just uncover the secrets behind a stolen painting. I discovered my own strength and the impact one person can have in the fight against corruption. So, here's to new beginnings and the power of standing up for what's right. And who knows? Maybe there are more adventures waiting for me just around the corner. That's the end of my story. Thanks for joining me on this journey. Remember to like and subscribe for more. Emma, signing off. That's a wrap on Emma's story of art, mystery, and justice. What do you think would have been the best course of action for the museum after the scandal broke? To seek a fresh start with new leadership, or to try to make amends for their past mistakes? Share your thoughts in the comments, and if you enjoyed this story, don't forget to like and subscribe for more engaging content.